Hello everyone. This lesson is on adversarial machine learning in which we have done the first lesson where we have created the example but we used a library called utils.py. So in this one I will be writing all of the functions that we have used in utils. So but I'm not writing in a dot python file. I'm just using a Jupyter notebook but all of these th code can be copied into dot py file and then can be included in the in notebook like uh, Jupyter notebook. And before I start, I just want to introduce this uh, tutorial, which is the Adversity and Robustness Theory in Practice. I'm taking all of the contents from this tutorial, and this is a new IPS 2018 tutorial, so uh, you may also read directly from this tutorial. Okay, so uh, in this one, I have included all of these libraries and uh, also uh, mean and standard deviation. Mean and standard deviation is uh, as per the ImageNet uh, recommended mean and standard deviation by the PyTorch. So all of the images must be normalized based on this mean and standard deviation, which has been computed based on the yeah, from the ImageNet dataset. Okay, so uh, we need to first define the transform function, not transform, but the uh, pre-processing step. And the pre-processing step, what you want is that you will get. A, let's write. We can write a function in which we will get an image of the. Um, get the file path of the image and then we need to open that image and then we need to convert the resize that image in 224 by 224 so that it matches the resonant requirement and then we need to convert the tensor so that's all we need in the pre-process okay so for that we can define a transform variable transform is equal to so this transform uh, uh, it will convert uh, image to, to 220 by 224 and then we'll convert to a tensor and we can use the library called from the torch vision torch vision dot transforms dot resize and we can give it a size of 224 in a triple 224 so this is the first uh, transformation of the image augmentation we need and the second one we need is the we don't want to convert this to a tensor so torch vision dot uh, transforms dot two tensor this one two tensor so by this one by using this transform okay so we can compose this transform so this is just a list and we can say the torch vision torch vision dot transforms and then dot compose transforms okay so this is a transformation that we will be using here 224 by 224 yeah we need to give this as a triple but as two quantities so we should give like this one okay so this is okay now and now we can write a, a function called p process and then we, we may use it as utils dot p process and in this one we need to give a file name so file name is an absolute path where the image is there and this will uh, this pre process will give us returns a batch tensor so we also want to convert into a batch because the, all the training and resonate assumes that you will give a batch but in, in our case we are going to give a one image so it will be a batch of one only so returns batch tensor and its, it's shape should be one three which is for the color channel 224 and 224 this is what we expect from a file name so this function uh, takes input as a file name and will return as a back tensor 13 to 224 224 this is what the peak process does okay so to start with we need to uh, con first open this file name we, you, using a pil so we can call it as pil image and we can say pil dot image dot open pil dot image dot open and we can pass this as a file name that we have received okay so by opening this we will get the pil image and now we, we we already have this transform so we have the transforms like this one and we we can pass they use this transform to convert this to uh, the tensor resize as well as the tensor so we can say that image tensor image tensor is equal to 
transform and then PIL image. Okay, so once we have completed this step, so after this one, so the image will be converted to a tensor, but this will be of the shape uh, 3, 2, 24, 2, 24. Not one three two twenty four two three. And now we need to add one more dimension here. And for that we can use the function from the torch called unsqueeze. So unsqueeze adds dimension and squeeze reduces the dimension. So we can say the image tensor is equal to torch dot unsqueeze and then image tensor. And we need to give the dimension that we want and to unsqueeze at the zeroth dimension so that it becomes a uh, 1 3 2 24 to the ratio and then uh, we can return this one return image tensor okay, so if you want to try we can try we have a data here in the lab data but uh, we have images here so we uh, we have the i have the panda image images panda dot jpeg so we can use this one Let's run this one and then we can say pre process, pre process, and use this image. Maybe we can define a variable so that we can use it later also. File name is equal to images, images dot panda dot jpeg, and we can pass this image to this one. So this will give us a uh, tensor, but what we want is we want to just check the shape only. Okay, so you can see that it will be returns 1, 3, 2, 24, 2, 24. So this is what it, we want. We are giving a file name and we want a tensor of this shape and this function is correct. Next what we want is that we want to co convert this tensor to numpy because if we want to see this image, and uh, we will not be able to see this image unless this uh, because the matplotlib wants a uh, tensor in, in the form of numpy numpy array okay so i'll write a function so that we can anytime we can see so this is a tensor to numpy and this will re receive an image which is the image tensor basically so input will be image tensor and sometimes we need may need to clip the values also and we can say the clip minimum is equal to zero and clip max is equal to one so that the all values are between zero and one this is also requirement for the, to display the tensors okay so tensor to numpy will convert a PyTorch tensor to NumPy array. So PyTorch tensor is basically in the form of if you see the shape, then it is channel height and width to a NumPy array which is height, width, and then the channel. So it's not 3, 2, 24, 2, 24, but NumPy needs 2, 24, 2, 24, but 3. So we need to transform transform these arrays, transpose these uh, some columns. Okay, so let's write it in the code. So we need first image numpy. So how do we can convert the image numpy from the tensor? So first thing is that we need to call the function image tensor dot detach. So first we detach from this one and then we call numpy and then we need to do the transpose. The transpose will be that what we want is this is 0, this is 1 and this is 2. So we want 1, 2 and this will be third dimension. So we will write it in the form of 1, 2 and 0. And so we have already converted this to numpy. Only thing left is that we want to clip these values between 0 and 1. So we can just say image numpy is equal to np dot clip. np dot clip and we can give that okay this image and dot np to be clipped 
and between clip minimum to clip maximum clip minimum to clip max and then we can return this image number. okay so we have this image now so you can test it uh, we have this image and we pre-processed it it will give us the tensor this is this file name and we will get from this one is the image tensor and if we print uh, type of image ten type of image tensor and then image tensor dot shape we'll see that it's a tensor of and the shape is 132424 and now let's convert to numpy so we can just say image numpy is equal to tensor to numpy and we can pass this image tensor in this one in this function so we can so, and now we can print type of image np and then image np dot shape image np image tensor okay yeah and uh, the thing is that when we, we are converting to numpy array so we have this is a batch actually image tensor dot and so we should not be passing the batch here to convert to numpy so what we want is we want to pass the zeroth element only or we need to reduce the squeeze in the image tensor so anything is possible so but the thing is that it should be in the in three dimension not the four dimension so we can see here this is the numpy array and its uh, shape is now 224 224 by 3 so now this image can be viewed in the mat mat plotlet okay so next function that we will be using is normalize so normalize will take an input and its uh, objective is to normalize the image only that with respect to mean and standard deviation okay and we have already pre-processed so we will not re rewrite it so we have transform and then the pre-process give us the in the form of a tensor so only thing is that we need one more step on the, on the top of the pre-processing step so one additional uh, transformation so we can write this as norm is equal to torch vision dot transforms dot normalize and in this one we can pass the mean and standard deviation and then we can pass return basically directly also that norm of type input so whatever input it will receive this input will be normalized based on mean and standard deviation okay so this is all about the normalization and then sometime uh, we when we are doing processing we want to see that uh, the image what's happening in the image and since all of these images are normalized so in order to visualize we need inverse normalization so we can write the inverse normalization inverse normalize so this will also receive an input and we need to now reverse this process of normalization we can write the transform transforms for this one inverse transforms and we can write this similarly as we have defined earlier that inverse no transforms can be like this one uh, torch vision dot transforms dot normalize so what we can do is in, in we can use uh, inverse normalization using normalize only thing is that mean and standard deviation will be different so in this case we can write mean is equal to all zeros mean zeros and standard deviation is equal to 1 by 0.229 1 divided by 0 
two two four and one divided by zero point two two five. Okay, so before uh, we jump into more into the inverse normalization, but let's first understand what is actually normalization. So we have a mean which is uh, mu, or maybe we can just write m, and then we have standard deviation. So we have a mean, and then we have standard deviation. So what what happened during the normalization step is that uh, because we want it to be within mean and standard deviation. So if it, there is an input image, so what we are going to do is we subtract a mean from this number this image and then divided by the standard deviation so this is what happens in the normalization and in the inverse normalization what we want is that this standard deviation should be multiplied and then the mean should be added okay so mean standard deviation should be multiplied and mean should be added so what what we are doing here is in the inverse normalization so we are not uh, multiplying the standard deviation and adding the mean so we are using the normalized function to do the inverse normalize so at at uh, at two different steps so first in the first step the standard deviation is this one we have 229 224 225 so what i am going to do is we are dividing this standard deviation by where I am writing standard deviation 1 divided by this so that when normalized is applied so this will be divided so when we divide by 1 by 2 to 9 the effect will be of multiplication and then addition will be plus 0 so the if net effect of this one will be multiplication of standard deviation using the normalized function okay and the next step I we want is the mean should be added so what we, in that what we will do is so we will we'll make standard deviation as 1 but the mean will be negative of the original mean so that the multiplication is 1 but it will be added. So this is how I am going to write the inverse norm. There may be many other ways also but this is one of the ways that we can use the normalize to do the inverse normalize. Okay. So this is uh, what we have done so far is we have written this normalize with mean 0 and standard deviation 1 and then I will write one more element in this one which will be the torch vision dot uh, transforms dot again normalize ok so now I think you are, can understand now that I am going to write mean is equal to not 0 but the negative of the original mean of the the pi torch which net mean so it will be minus 0 0.485 comma negative 0 0.456 and again negative 0 0.406 so this is the mean and the standard deviation we know is that we have already multiplied so we don't want to do here it will be just 1 1 1 Okay, so if we apply this one, so it will be actually the inverse inverse transform. Okay, so we can compose this one. So we can write torch vision dot transforms dot compose and inverse transforms. And then since we have defined the inverse transforms, we now we just need to apply on this input and return. Return. Uh, inverse transforms with the input. So this is all about the inverse uh, normalization. Okay. So next is to get the ImageNet classes. Well, most of the time we will be reading the different classes, so we need a dictionary here that so that we can give the index and we get the name of the class. So I've used this function also. So definition maybe just get image net classes. So I have downloaded all of these image net classes in a JSON file. So that I can just pass. File name is equal to this is uh, data and then image net class index dot JSON. So this is a file with that has all the classes 
it returns the list of image net class. So this this will return the list actually only the list. So since it's a list, we can by the index we can find out the name of the class. We don't have to create a dictionary. So returns list of image net classes. So it will read this JSON file and will return as the list. So JSON file has many other things also, but we want just a list, a sequential list. Okay, so this is a JSON, so we need to open this file with open uh, file name. So we open this file name as a file name pointer, and then we can call ImageNet. ImageNet is equal to JSON dot load. So we can load this file. We got this image net and then uh, this is a dictionary and uh, you want to see we can see this one how does it look like print image net okay let's call this function get image net classes okay so we can see that this gives us zero this is the index of the class and this is some code for that and this is the class name so what we want is we want just these names and these names in the sequential list so this is a dictionary so what we'll do is we'll map this dictionary we can use the dictionary comprehension comprehension for that and we'll index there will be two elements first is the key and this is the value and we'll take the first element from the value okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that image net is equal to v1 so we, we will get true and we from the values we just want uh, the first index only so we can say v1 for v in image net dot values okay and let's see now print so you can see here that we have all the classes now and this is what we want so we can just now since it is so we can just say return image net okay so we have the list here now and let's say we want to print only the five elements so these are the first five elements okay so next next is what we want is the model so we need a model and i'm writing the function called we have used this as net 50 so i'm right, going to define a function called get resnet 50. okay so this function returns the pre-trained ResNet 50 model. Okay, so if in order to get the ResNet, we need weights first. Since it's a, we want a pre trained model, so we need weights. And the weights are given in the PyTorch library. And I can write just the definition. There are a number of weights, so uh, we can write a variable and then <coughs> pass the variable to the um, model ResNet 50. So weights is equal to resnet 50 weights and dot image net so image net v1 so i can take okay so you can take v2 also and once we got the weight so we can use the model is equal to resnet 50 and we can pass the weights to this model so we want weights is equal to weights this is the model and since we are using this model for the inference so we need to set the eval mode so this model is for evaluation purpose only no gradients to be computed and we can return this model okay so we got the model and now the last and the important step is that inference so we want to write the inference function in which uh, we, we have covered all of the combinations in the inference that you give us the file name it will give the based on the image uh, the results from the model model 50 you may give a uh, file name you may give image tensor you may give the delta so delta will be added so all of those combinations are written in this inference function that's the core uh, part of this tutorial 
So this is an inference and in the inference it will take the model and then it may take file name it may take file name so i'm writing it as in none so there may not be the file name and then it also takes the true idx so if we, we want that what is the true idx okay so if the true idx is given so it, in this inference function can compute the loss if the true idx is not given it may not be able to compute uh, the loss delta delta is none so if the delta is given so this delta will be added to this uh, file open and this delta will be added so it will it will give us the it will give inference on the modified image if delta is there if there is no delta then it is it will not give uh, a modified uh, it will not consider it as a modified image then we have an image tensor so instead of the file name, you can also give the image tensor. Like you have pre-processed uh, file, like you have pre-processed tensor, and and then you want to give this to the inference. You may not give the file name, but you may give only the image tensor. Okay. So these are all the combinations of possibilities in the inference. So this function returns max idx. So it will give us the maximum idx which class uh, which idx has the maximum probability and then max probability class name max max ideas max mode rest all we can find out and then the image tensor normalized so why are we returning this image tensor because you want to visualize it whether this inference will be based on this image tensor normalized. So it, you will give the delta, you will give the file name or the image tensor. So these two will be added and based on that, this image tensor normalized will be used for the inference. And now we want to see by the matplotlib whether there is a significant change or not. And we have seen that there is not much significant, not much means there is no significant change that we can observed by the human eyes but still the model gives us the different output okay so let's write this function so first is that if the file name has been passed so i can just write if there is a file name has been passed then we need to pre-process this file name so we, and we can call this function our uh, pre-process and this will give us the image tensor so we can get the image tensor from the pre-process and we can just pass the file name in this one okay so this file name will be transfer 224 224 and the batch dimension will be added converted into the tensor okay so that step so we have uh, we will get the image tensor by now Let's see right none also or why is it is error also okay so either we will have image tensor from this from this one image variable as an input to the function or we will if there is a file name we will get the image tensor so by the next line definitely that we must have the image tensor either as an input or by open by using the preprocess step the only thing that we want to check is whether there is a delta or there or not so if there is a delta then we want to add this delta into the image tensor otherwise we don't want to add there is no need to add because there is no delta so we'll check that if torch dot is tensor delta so we're just checking whether the uh, delta is none or it's a tensor so if it is a tensor then what we want is we want to modify this image tensor and how do we want to modify the image tensor we'll just add the delta image tensor plus delta so remember that we have uh, uh, we have delta of exactly same shape as the image tensor so if there is a delta we'll just add this delta to the image tensor okay so now we have the image tensor whether it's a, a, a added delta or not so we want to normalize this tensor and we can use our normalization function and i can call it is that the image tensor normalized is equal to uh, normalize and image tensor 
okay so this uh, uh, this function this image tensor has been normalized now and what we want is and this is what we are returning so this is what to be returned also so we will return this but we will use this for the prediction so i'm going to write predicted predicts is equal to model and image tensor normalized we will pass this image tensor normalized to the model and we get the predicted yeah so these are the logits okay and now if you want to check the probability so what we want is we want to give maximum ideas maximum probability so maximum idea definitely we can find out right now also that which index has the maximum logit vector so that we can return or if you want to for compute the probabilities we can use the softmax function and we can write the probabilities probabilities is equal to torch dot nn dot softmax and we can pass the uh, dimension is equal to one and we want probabilities from the because we have the batch size also so we want from dimension one and we can pass the predicts so these are the predicted logic vector and this will give us the probability okay so far great so we got the probability so now from this probability we want which index has the maximum probability plus uh, what is the maximum probability so we can find out both using the toss.max so it will return the maximum number as well as its index so it will give us maximum probability as well maximum idx using torch.max function and we can pass this probabilities and then dimension is equal to 1 we don't want at zeroth dimension we want as first dimension okay so we got this maximum probability and maximum idx so these are uh, maximum probability and maximum idx both are uh, in terms of tensor so this is a scalar quantity and uh, what we can do is this is a number only which is the idx so we can just use this um, item function maximum idx is equal to maximum idx dot item so this will be converted to a scalar quantity and the maximum probability we need to first detach it from the tensor to cpu and then we we, we can call this item so maximum probability is equal to, and we need to round off this variable also so you can say round maybe just uh, you can write it here maximum three but we need to convert first detach detach from the torch and then call this item function if this is also scalar quantity because it's a probability so it's, it should be one dimensional vector so any one dimensional vector can be converted to scalar using the item so we have detached and then we call the item okay and then we have rounded so we got the maximum probability so these are the three things to be returned maximum idx maximum probability and the image tensor normalized and plus if you want to convert if you want to find out the loss you can find out because we have the logic vectors and then you can we can do that also so if there is a true idx has been passed if there is true idx so, so we know that this is the true idx i can write it as a none only it is optional that if it has been passed okay so if it has been passed then what you want to do is we can compute the loss also and how do we compute the loss loss is equal to nn dot cross entropy loss so cross entropy loss and we need to pass the predicted predicted not the probabilities but the predicted so uh, because cross entropy loss will automatically convert uh, we'll call this automax okay so we will pass the logits which is the predicts and then we also want to pass the true class basically true class not directly but in the form of a tensor so we'll write the torch dot long tensor torch dot long tensor and then we will pass a true idx true idx okay so after this one we'll got the loss but then this loss is also this is a scalar quant is one dimensional but tensor so what we want to do is we want to also round this off to the three values maybe and we need to 
convert this we can call directly the item here okay so we can call loss dot item and three dimension okay so now is the return time return so what we want to return we want to return the max idx we want to return the max probability we want to return the image tensor norm and then in this case we want to return the loss also and in case there is no true idx when there is no computation required we can just say return idx probability and image tensor norm so this is all about the inference function that we have used the last function that we have written used is display the delta display delta so display delta it, in delta is a very small quantity and if we open this delta without zoom out that will just be a black so what we want is then we'll just uh, zoom this the values so we'll say the delta so delta is also a batch tensor so what we want is it's a zeroth dimension only because all images are in the form of 1 3 2 24 2 24 and we have converted into uh, four dimension but we converted into a three dimensional so that we we can see it here and batch is not required okay so we will use it as a delta zero okay so we assume that you are giving the fourth dimension in the form of a batch so in case you are uh, not pass this delta zero here then you don't need this step okay so after this one so what i'm going to do is this delta zero will multiply by 50 delta zero is equal to delta zero multiplied by 50 and just for some random variation we have the 0.5 also and this delta can be converted to uh, num pair now so we'll use delta zero is equal to tensor to num p and then delta zero and we can call the uh, we can display this at delta zero using plot and show yes this will directly display and we have seen this uh, display delta also so this is all about the utils uh, file so we just need to write all of these shift all of these into so python file dot py file and include in the jupyter notebook that we have used earlier and then in the this tutorial is complete in the next video i'll cover the maths behind the, in this one so that we know what's happening from the mathematics point of view thank you